South Coast. Today we've got a um, Labrador, chocolate Labrador, with this mass in the left thigh that's been aspirated as a soft tissue sarcoma. Um, not clear what the margin, I mean what the uh, grade is. Uh, we discussed uh, grading it beforehand with the owners, but they elected to just go straight to surgery. Um, I don't have as big a problem with doing that with soft tissue sarcomas because, number one, on an extremity, the ch likelihood of it being a high-grade tumor is not very high. Number two, I'm confident that I can get a clean margin on this regardless of the grade because I'm going for the, the um, uh, wider margins. And... Um, we took uh, chest x-rays, and the x-rays were, um, there was a, a concerning lesion that was overlying the stomach, so we went ahead and did a quick CT scan just to make sure that that was not a concern, and it was not. It's weird we're having all this bruising here. Uh, we'll just make sure that we go around that with our incision. So in this location, it is freely mobile over the greater trochanter, so we won't have to take greater trochanter out, but uh, we are going to have to take biceps muscle out, and that will not have any impact on function. And then to close this, uh, I'll ask these guys locally what our options are for closure on this thing. Um, I can think of about probably five different ones. Anybody have any thoughts on how we might be able to close this? Yeah, so we have a suggestion of a caudal superficial epigastric axial pattern flap, which would work very well here. Any others? Left ball flap. Okay, flank fold flap. Advantage of a flank fold flap in this location is that um, the flank fold flap is a little bit more versatile and maybe a little bit more robust. Um, and so that's, that's my preference. Uh, any other flaps that we could do? Uh, advancement flap you can do might not be enough in this location to get enough length to cover this defect, but that's certainly a consideration. There are a few more axial pattern flaps that you might consider. Anyone? Bueller? Anyone? So deep circumflex iliac, which is coming off right here and going dorsally. The ventral one's probably already gone because of the tumor. So deep circum circumflex iliac dorsal branch. Another one would be to fillet out the tail. That's, that might be the deep circumflex iliac ventral branch right there. It's coming out at the right spot. Uh, you could try primary closure, although I'd be worried about uh, dehiscence from excessive tension. We're breathing up a little bit here. Can you give him some purple please? What does he do for that, mate? Um, got it last hour, I leave, I shoot. And the bruising was worrying me a little bit, although they did um, aspirate it and draw out quite a bit of fluid, and so that might have been enough to traumatize it. The other consideration would be that it's a hemangiosarcoma. sarcoma. 
we've given propofol? Yes. Great, thanks. You, are you starting your second year or your third year? Um, midway through second year. Uh, sorry, that's what I meant, yeah. Midway through second year. What muscle is that? Okay, yep. And what is the structure is that? Structure is that white structure right here? Uh, it's a tensor fasciolata. Fasciolata or the muscle would be tensor fasciolata, yeah. What muscle is that? Superficial uh, or, or middle? Middle. That's superficial right here. So I can feel the greater trochanter with my finger. It's under your finger, is it? Yeah, right there. So that's middle gluteal muscle right there coming into the greater trochanter. And then this is biceps muscle here that I'm going to go full thickness through. Sciatic nerve will be right back in here. So what muscle is that? Yep, beautiful. So that's vastus lateralis back there. That's tensor fascia lata right there. Superficial gluteal right here. Coming through the vastus fascia. Sometimes when the tissue is really fatty, the um, ligature can't cauterize through it. Let's just retract up by a minute. That's deep circumflex iliac right there. So that's sartorius that I'm going through here. That had been in 3D, you guys would have seen a blood spurt.
So the whole idea with cancer surgery is drawing a circle around the visible tumor, drawing another circle at your comfortable margin, just cutting out everything that gets in the way. Very straightforward. Um, so that's what we've removed here. So that's the underside of the tensor fascia lata biceps muscle there. Um, so it looks to me like a clean margin. Um, can I get some mepivacaine, please? For those of you that joined us late, this is a 10-year-old chocolate Labrador, the history of a rapidly growing mass over the left greater trochanter that was aspirated, came back sarcoma. We discussed doing a biopsy and CT. The owners elected not to. What's that? Is that terminal? You'd be deeper. Uh, yeah, uh, four. Four, correct? Yeah. I think it's deeper than that. Um, and so, usually don't do much to close this at all, just inject it with some mepivacaine. I'm sorry, I'm not reviewing the question. Uh, yeah, just scroll up if you could and see if there are any that... <laughs> what I would have given to have this equipment as a resident. I've never heard of doing a tail tube flap. I don't know that there's a benefit to that because you have to sacrifice the tail anyway. Um, so, can I get some more towel clamps, please? All right, so I don't think I'm going to close anything here because if we start attaching muscles together, that are meant to be working in opposition to each other. Um, that leads to pain and dysfunction. All right, so what I'm gonna do here is to try to identify the flank fold flap in a direction that's going to give me the most skin. Just right up in here. So basically, I'm just trying to elevate. Can you hold on to that, please, for me? Uh, I just need to. We've just got some exposure here of some fur down deep. Okay, so that's. I reckon that's pretty good there. So come around here, Mel. Lift up on that. So now what I'm going to do is, so I've got all this, this skin here. So basically I'm pinching my thumb and index finger together to see what is easily going to close and not under too much tension. They can start on my next case, whatever it is. So you're pre-testing pre your donor site? Yeah, so I'm pre pinching my skin together from my donor site to see what I'm going to be able to close easily. All right, so go ahead and release those and take those off. The only area, eh, that'll be all right. So that's my donor. 
website there. That can close. Yep. All right. Uh, so, good question. The, this dog will not even look back for a second. It'll ambulate completely normally immediately after surgery. And would a caudal superficial epigastric work uh, Yes, it would. So, caudal superficial epigastric would be uh, one of the other common uh, flaps that people would attempt in this area. The downside of the caudal superficial epigastric is that it's not as robust as a flank fold flap because you're counting on that one vessel. And if you inadvertently damage that one vessel during harvest, uh, you'll get flap necrosis, whereas the flank full flap is dependent on three different blood vessels, or contributions from three different blood vessels. So um, I probably, at some point in my career or another, have had one fail, as in um, necrosis of the flap, but I can't remember it. Um, whereas with caudal super, you know, all the other axial pattern flaps, uh, some degree of flap failure is actually fairly common. It's always scary when you're harvesting a flap, seeing that your defect is much larger than your original tumor defect. But you get used to it. It's the nice part of human surgery where they have a cancer team and a closing team, right? It's yeah. So Yuri's just saying it's the nice part about human surgery is that I get to walk out and go and get lunch and the reconstruction team comes in and swears at me under their breath for the mess that I've made and puts it all together. Because the two teams are really diabolically opposed, or di diabolically, diametrically opposed, um, because the resection team is trying to get a clean margin at all costs, and the reconstruction team is trying to get a functional and cosmetic outcome at all costs. That's the deep circumflex iliac right there. The other thing, thing that I really like about the flank fold flap is that the base is very broad. And you can really point the base in whatever direction you want. Yeah, yeah, Yui is saying that you can point the base. You have four different locations that the base can come from. So that would be kind of scary just looking at that, thinking, oh, look at this mess that I've created, but you'll see that it'll come together really nicely. Um, so go ahead and lay that down now. And so basically what I do is I just kind of play with it and see where it's happy to sit down. I'll put some towel clamps down. Got some more towel clamps, shall we? I know, that's right. Now this is the, the tricky bit right in here. This is, if we're going to have a dehiscence, it's going to be right at this corner, right there. Um, so can we get a couple of packs of 2 PDS, please? Two to start, two to start. All right, so we'll do a sub Q and an intradermal. I'm gonna start right here and go in my direction, Yui, if you wanna start there and go. Or maybe start there and come down or whatever you like. Do you want a couple of tacking, deep tackings? Uh, sure.
I guess the other possibility with this dog is that he's got a bleeding tendency or she's got a bleeding tendency because I was getting, like it's common with a hemangiosarcoma to get bleeding from the tumor vicinity, but I feel like this, the, it's a bit oozy, it's a bit oozy down here as well. Does it have very mild bimbo Anna, are there any other questions? Yes, um, given the uncertainty of the tumor grade, would you have considered VAC for the defect and attention to the plaque? Um, so, question is, given we don't know what grade it is, would I have considered doing VAC initially? Um, that is a consideration. The only reason why you'd want to do that is if you are at all concerned about your ability to get a clean margin. And I'm, I'm very confident that I will have gotten a clean margin here, so I'm not worried about contaminating my, my um, donor site. But if there's any question about my ability to get a clean margin and there, thereby potentially contaminating my donor site, uh, leaving it open initially and then doing our flap when we get our biopsy results back uh, is certainly a, a sound surgical oncology approach. Hello, Angela. What time is it there? What time is it here? 1.30 here. 1.30 here, so it's about 5.30 in the afternoon there, I think. No, that's not right. Uh, it is 16, we are six, no, we're 14 hours ahead, which means that it is 11.30 at night, or 10.30 in Chicago. I'm used to doing these calculations when I was calling my parents once a week and figuring out whether they were going to be asleep or awake. we can get sub Q wise here. I haven't closed any of that. Okay. It's, they're just tapped, so I'm just gonna I can work down that way or alright. Take this out here. Have we told them that we can move on to the next case? Yeah, so they're going to start on the ECT now. Great, thank you. Um, is the ECT a relatively straightforward one? Like it's a big, hours? big one. I'll probably do that, yeah. It's probably about 10, uh, probably 15 square, me square centimeters of tissue to don't do a lot of genetic testing here on tumors. Um, I guess like when you're looking for tumor markers, 
like um, KI67 and I um, can't remember all the other ones, the mast cell tumor ones and stuff that um, seek hit mutations and that kind of thing. I guess that's really genetic testing, isn't it? We are using um, cadet BRAF PCR for transitional cell carcinoma. So Yui is saying that we do um, the cadet BRAF PCR uh, for transitional cell carcinomas, which would be genetic testing as well. All right, well, I reckon I am done here. So I think that's going to close really nicely. So the key is going to be getting this biopsy result back and hoping that it's not a hemangiosarcoma. Um, may need to cut that. Oh, no, that'll be all right. Um, all right, so I'll leave it to these guys to finish up. So I'll just go back and make sure there aren't any questions that I haven't answered. Hi, California, Toronto, 10.30 p.m. in Chicago. Angela, that question. Hi, India. Uh, the tumor we, is a sarcoma. We assume a soft tissue sarcoma, lower intermediate grade, but we won't know until we get the biopsy results back. California, Connecticut, Philippines, Florida. Um, so I'm going to leave it pretty much at that. So it's just an intradermal closure from this point going forward. I'm not sure if I'll have anything else to live stream today. I hope so. I've got a couple of other X-laps, but I'm not sure whether I'll be able to stream them or not. Anyway, thanks a lot for watching. If you haven't already done so, please subscribe to our channel. Make sure you turn on notifications so you'll get a being on your phone the next time we live stream. And you always saying we might have an Atlanta axial luxation tomorrow, so that'll be fun as well. Anyway, we will talk to you again.